everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today we're taking a look at Mickey Mania, the timeless adventures of Mickey Mouse. Every now and then I love to reflect on a console game from the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo era. Believe it or not, the Genesis was one of my first loves when it came to video games, and I have a mushy spot in my black, crusty, deteriorating goth heart for side-scrolling platformers. And I know a lot of people have already talked about Mickey Mania, but I don't care, I do what I want. The game was developed in 1994 by Traveler's Tales. They initially began developing games with Psygnosis. Their first game was Leander, released in 1991. They have an impressive resume of games developed, having done Sonic 3D Blast in the past, <laughs> that rhymed, but recently they're known for the LEGO series of action-adventure games as TT Games. You know, everything from LEGO Star Wars to LEGO The Hobbit. Which just sounds weird. It sounds like I'm saying, let go of the Hobbit or something. <clears throat> or it could be the name of the Hobbit. Lego! The Hobbit. Mickey Mania was originally supposed to be released around Mickey Mouse's 65th birthday, but the developers realized they would not be able to meet that deadline, so the concept evolved into a tribute game where the player goes through classic Mickey cartoons, starting with Steamboat Willie from 1928 and ending with The Prince and the Pauper from 1990. The game really convinces me how much Disney loves Disney. Let's remind everyone of how great Mickey Mouse is by creating a game where you play as Mickey Mouse and you are saving other Mickey Mouses from Mickey Mouse cartoons. Though simple, this idea translated perfectly to video game form, and the result is pretty magical, really. I used to have a VHS tape of a lot of the Mickey cartoons referenced here. It's incredibly endearing to play through. The graphics and overall tone of the game is spellbinding. Seriously, let's take several moments to admire how gorgeous this game is. The animations, the background art, the characters that look identical to their designs in the classic Mickey cartoons in which they originated. The 3D elements look really nice, especially especially since the Genesis had limited capabilities, even with blast processing. The developers had to use clever programming techniques to create rolling, scaling 3D effects, as seen here in the Moose Chase and here with the rotating tower. Because the Genesis had a fast CPU, it made the artificial 3D parts of the game look very convincing and smooth. The sprite animation was done by Disney's Animation Studio based in Florida, which accounts for why the game looks absolutely flawless. You know as well as I do that Disney isn't gonna let anyone fuck up their shit with the exception of Fantasia. Someone really dropped the ball on that one. If you're a huge Mickey Mouse fan, you are going to absolutely love these levels. Though when I say levels, I mean that there are main levels and then a few sub-levels within them. You start in the Steamboat Willie universe, based on the cartoon of the same name, where you can shamelessly pounce on cats and kill Pete so you can use his body as a trampoline. Man, I kind of feel bad about that. Bye. You go on to the next level, The Mad Doctor, and this one is especially fun since I used to have the 1933 cartoon on VHS tape when I was young. Everything looks absolutely perfect, but Jesus Christ, the difficulty level is out of control. Throughout the game, you collect these marbles, or candies, I'm not sure what they are, and you can throw them to kill oncoming enemies. But really? These bats take two hits, some of them take three, and you do not want to run out of these candies or marbles. Three hits is definitely some bullshit to me, and you cannot throw multiple marbles at a time in a rapid fire way. The throwing is rather slow, especially compared to other games like Aladdin, where you can throw these apples with fervor. You can also bop on enemies to kill them, but not everyone is secure in their ability to bop, and so instead rely on the marbles. As you can see, I'm killing enemies off screen, which tends to help. The clincher that really makes this so strenuous is the hit detection. Be perfect or die, that's the idea. Also, you get to do Science. in this level. Look, I made some muck. The boss for this level is in fact the Mad Doctor. When you bop him on the head, he spews beakers from his body. That may or may not be double entendre. Following the Mad Doctor is the Moose Hunters level adapted from the 1937 short film in which you are being chased by an extremely angry moose. Brutal gameplay here, brutal! I mean, come on, boulders and branches and a moose suffering from grumpy pants syndrome? It's followed by the moose chase, which isn't too hard if you just eat apples. Apparently, apples give Mickey the energy to run faster. An apple a day does keep the brutal moose away. Or at least like 50 apples, which is about what Mickey ate on this trail. Bye bye constipation! Now we have the Lonesome Ghost segment, which is based on the 1937 cartoon that features Goofy, Donald, and Mickey dabbling in the paranormal, which is where your blood will start to boil from the crazy difficult platforming. Don't deny what you are feeling. Use that 
that rage to power you through this level. Feel it flowing through you like you took four shots of espresso, filling your veins that protrude through your tense, clenched neck muscles. It takes precise jumps and quick reaction times, but man, it's pretty great. So many awesome details in this level design. The smallest things make me happy, like this portrait rolling down the wall, for example. It reminds me of the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney. The remaining levels are Mickey and the Beanstalk, which was a cartoon included in Disney's 1947 animated feature, Fun and Fancy Free, a personal favorite of mine, and The Prince and the Pauper from 1990. The Beanstalk level is particularly striking. These little bug characters are so adorable. I almost feel guilty killing them but I have to. BOOM! Hey, I said almost guilty, almost. The Prince and the Pauper has some of the hardest parts, but nothing quite takes the cake like this rising fire, quick paced section where you cannot make a single mistake. It's not impossible, but it does take a few tries to get right, and your lives and continues are limited. If you do lose, and you have to lose a continue, you're thrown back to the very beginning of the level. You can only handle five hits before you bite the dust, and there are limited health stars. This is a game you can become good at with practice. It's not a game you can blast through. And I do tend to blast through games like Sonic the Hedgehog and Aladdin as quickly as I can because I know I can find a ring or a health pack in the future if I get hit, but this game takes a lot more trial and error. I love a challenging side-scrolling platformer, so I liked practicing with this one, judging my reaction times, coming up with strategic ways to sift through the enemies and hold on to health. I also really appreciate all of these added mechanics to the game, areas that have different puzzles to get to your goal. It's not just straight up platforming the entire way through. There's a lot of things that break it up so it doesn't get too monotonous. Now I will say this, if you weren't a big Mickey fan, especially a Mickey fan, this game might not seem that charming at all. It's relying on this motif, navigating Mickey through these past evolutions to draw people in, and that's not a concept everyone will connect with. Young people might not recognize these esteemed cartoons, and without that familiarity, all you really have is a tedious game that might be too difficult for first time players. Even though those quirky mechanics I mentioned moments ago kept the platforming fresh, they aren't enough to make a solid game. What really makes this game enjoyable is the fusion of Mickey Mouse past and present. Since I love these old cartoons, the game is extremely enjoyable for me, despite the gameplay itself being laborious. The familiarity of the characters, the level design, combined with those interesting mechanics, is what makes this game worth remembering. It was later re-released for the PlayStation under the title Mickey's Wild Adventure, which has updated graphics and a few changes to the levels, both design-wise and gameplay-wise, but it's essentially the same game. Give it a shot sometime and see what you think. You may just find another fun Disney game to add to your repertoire. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review of Mickey Mania. If you want to see a few more Disney game reviews, check out the annotations. Aladdin and the Lion King coming at ya. If you want to debate these 16-bit console wars with me, hit me up on my social media accounts. And if you want to get rid of some money because you just have way too much of it, I do have a Patreon account. Thanks again, and see you guys in the next one. Thank you.